Good evening, YouTube. It is your boy Wally with Swamp Fox Adventures. And I already put a video out earlier. I'm going to put another one out. Um, I'm going to roast a chicken. And I just went and checked our garden. We still had some rosemary hanging on. Everything else froze out and is dead. So at least I get some fresh rosemary to add. And I'm going to show you all how to roast a chicken. And it is so easy. I just came outside to see if we had any rosemary or anything else is lying in the garden still, or if it all get froze out and there's an egg. I don't know if the critter was moving one of little duck's eggs, if little duck laid it there, or if she was moving her eggs. Because every time we find her nest, she moves her eggs. The very first thing you do is get yourself a chicken. Now it's usually gonna come frozen, so you thaw it out. We keep it in the bag that it comes in, in the sink, and just let it drain. After about a day, take it out, put it on a pan. You can see how deep that roasting pan is. Reach inside the body cavity and make sure you pull out all the little giblets and everything else that is inside a plastic bag. And it is inside a plastic bag because this animal came from a store. He was imprisoned or she, her whole life or its whole life. I don't know, I'm still confused about all the pronoun stuff, y'all, sorry. It was imprisoned its whole, whole life in very, 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 very constrictive enclosures. Um, caged to do nothing but just be slaughtered. Um, and that's why there's a plastic bag inside. When you focus on meat that does not come from a store, there's not plastic inside it. It's really pretty cool. Now, as you're pulling out, I already washed my hands. That's why I'm not going to show you. But stick your hand in the cavity and feel around. Feel the inside of the ribs and whatnot. You want to make sure there's no ice. It's not cold. You want to make sure that this carcass is entirely thawed out. You are also going to need some salt. And don't use that iodized crap. Use like sea salt or kosher salt. Black pepper. Garlic powder, if you want it. Montreal chicken seasoning. Only because I had it in the cabinet. Rosemary, because we still had some in the garden. And then carrots, potatoes, onions, and I'll show you what to do with them. Now, this looks like a lot of food, and it is. And I'll show you exactly why you're roasting a whole chicken. Because we're gonna roast it with the vegetables, we're gonna eat that tonight, then we're gonna carve it up. And then for the next coming week and whatnot, we're gonna have sliced turkey, for turkey sand, or I mean chicken, for chicken sandwiches and whatnot. A um, couple more vegetables, we already have cooked chicken. And then we're gonna use the bones, the stock, all that to, or the carcass, to cook down into a stock. And we're gonna have chicken soup for days. And that's gonna feed us. We're gonna take a bunch of, you know, the roast chicken with, you know, all the servings and whatnot, potatoes, carrots over to our neighbor and then when we do the soup we're going to take a bunch over to him as well and you'll see how far this goes it's super economical and people just don't cook anymore i think everyone should get back to cooking now i have this pan tilted up at an angle because even though the chicken is thawed i know i'm going to call it a turkey again let it sit and drain. You want to try to get as much moisture out of it as possible. Now it is time to do a rough cut on the veggies. You can chop them fine, but I really don't screw with it. I just do a nice rough cut. Now the first thing we're going to do is open up all of our spices because we want to avoid cross-contamination. And if you do it this way, you're only going to have to wash your hands once. Uh, let's go with the big side. I'm gonna go with the big side on this stuff too because I really like it. Okay, y'all ready? 
I always start with the salt and I go pretty darn heavy. Followed by the pepper and I also go pretty darn heavy. And then I come in with the garlic and I'm like hitting like I'm beating this. Oh geez I didn't mean to beat it up that bad. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to come in with the Montreal on the super garlic bird. Okay. Okay, now this is the point where you're going to have to wash your hands, but only once if you follow it this way. You go and you actually rub all that rub, which is essentially a dry rub, into every nook and cranny of that bird. But I don't want to wash my hands again, so I'm just going to load it up with the vegetables. Okay, I always put the taters in and carrots in at the bottom. You can see I am just... Half, not haphazardly. Ooh, that one's a little rotten. We're not going to use that one. That's because, like I said, I just split them. I get a super rough cut. And you can see how fast that is. Now, the onions, they're coming on top. Okay, and we're getting close. We are getting really close. This onion, I'm going to drop right into the cavity. Okay, actually I took that onion out, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a sprig of rosemary in there, and I'm going to put some sliced green Granny Smith apples in there. Bam! And we are ready to cover this up. Now, some people will take the rosemary and they'll strip all the leaves off. Don't worry about it. Just throw it in there, and it's gonna be a lot easier to pick, pick these up, just like this, and remove them when it's done. Because we're gonna cover it in foil, and as it slowly cooks and roasts, the steam from all the moisture in the vegetables and the fat in the chicken is going to work out all the oils and flavoring of the rosemary and that steam is just gonna it's gonna permeate that taste all over our oven has reached the temp at 350 the chicken is wrapped and covered in foil now i went ahead and i secured this nice you want to crimp crank whatever you want to call it make sure you got a nice tight seal because we want to keep the moisture in on this. Unlike the ham where we wanted the moisture to escape. There it is in the oven at 350. We're gonna shut the door and we're gonna come back in an hour and we're gonna pull it and check it. We're not even gonna take the tin foil off. I'm gonna show you all how to do that. When it comes to poultry and pork, I always check the temp. I'm worried. I generally overcook my chicken and pork for some reason. Now, duck on the other hand, I will eat duck breast rare. Now, this is a thermometer that I've had for whew, my whole life, I think. Um, I'm almost 50. I believe I got this from my mother, but I'm not sure. Okay, y'all, what are we looking at? 24 minutes. I'm getting bored. So we're going to go out in the backyard with this, which is a 37 millimeter launcher. We're going to launch oop, that, and we're going to launch that. It's not quite 10 o'clock, so uh, I'm still somewhat within community guidelines. Okay, y'all, we're going to do this and then i'm gonna edit and at that point it should be time to check the temperature of the chicken okay let's drop the first one in and since i'm self-filming i'm gonna use the dock i'm gonna cock it by and okay it looks like it's on fire let's see what happens Ooh, let's turn the light on Okay, and we're just going to sort of Johnny Law it. Not bad. Let's do another one real quick. 
these things are a blast and i'll end up putting a video out showing y'all how to make them now i'm going to show you something that's pretty cool pretty fun don't try it at home just let other folks do it you'll see it in one second okay you cannot see it because it's dark but i have it loaded cocked pointed at the water watch this I told you that was pretty cool um, by the way, these are totally legal, not considered a firearm. Um, you can buy them straight off of eBay, gun broker, Amazon, or direct from the different manufacturer websites. Um, heck, check out my eBay store. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm waiting on that chicken to come out, look at what I just got from the pellet shop. We got my Donnie FL fat boy. And of course the Slim Jims. Ben is, I know there's gonna be stickers in here too. Here is my 30 cal FX hybrid slugs. Look at all these magazines. Does that not give you all a clue how much I am in love with that dang AEA 30 cal? Ooh. And here we go. So I can actually get some verified, well, at least from the FX pocket, some verified chrono stats out for y'all. Not gonna mess with that tonight. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna use this as incentive to get a lot of my work done tonight and tomorrow before I start making y'all another video. Okay, it's time to check the chicken. Now, open the oven door. Stand it up. You don't want your face right there when all that heat and steam and everything comes rushing out. Um, especially if you have glasses because it's going to fog everything up. And use pot holders. Um, you can get these. I think these came from the dang dollar store. That smells awesome. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to check the temp. So the breast is up here. It's the thickest part of the meat. Put it in there. Oh, it's through. I'm going to pull it up. You want the temperature probe right in the center. You can see it's starting to climb. Okay, you can see that we're barely getting a reading. Well, that's because I moved it around and then put it back in and tried to pretend I didn't. But needless to say, the chicken needs to go back in for quite some time. I usually slow roast, but I just turned the oven up to 375 because I want to get this chicken done before Laura gets home and before we get in bed. Um, I'm trying to go to bed early tonight. I just watched the uh, last video I uploaded because I shared it with some friends and whatnot and I wanted to make sure I wasn't cussing. I've really, really been trying to be mindful of uh, my foul language and oh, I didn't realize how much I cussed until I started putting videos out there and I was like, whoa, I cussed like a sailor and I was like, well, I am a sailor. Still, no excuse. I've been trying to be mindful. But, as I was watching that video, I remembered it's Wednesday, so guess who's not gonna forget to put the trash out tonight? Your boy Wally. Dude, I wish I got as excited as you do to put the trash out. Yes, I do. Come on, oh, we're gonna put the trash out. Let's go, yeah! Dude, you act like we never take you any place. Mission accomplished. Okay, we cooked the chicken for another hour and a half at 375, and I'm gonna open the oven door because I don't wanna blast my face off or at bare minimum, fog my glasses up. Notice I closed the oven door. That is to conserve heat in case we're putting this back in. Ooh, look at the steam. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, we want this chicken at 165 degrees internal temperature. Now you can see it's sitting, well you can't see because there's glare, right a little north of 160. So it's probably 162 or whatnot. Now this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this heat up. And we're gonna turn it up to 450. It's taking a while, probably edit that out, start. And then we're going to remove this foil. This smells so good. Now, check it out real quick. Okay. 
You can see how it doesn't have that roasted look. You can see all the steam coming up off of it. You can see a little bit of the pink because we have created pressure in that skin as it cooks and that steam builds up. So when we pick, pricked it with the meat thermometer, all those juices started flowing out. Now you can see how they're still pink. We want that to cook. Don't, do not eat pink chicken. Now, because we want that nice brown, buttery, I don't know if you can say buttery, um, but speaking of which, I'm gonna put some butter on here to help it brown. But we wanna cook the outside, crisp it, and trap that moisture inside. And that's why we turn the oven up. And while I'm waiting for it to heat up, I am gonna go in here with a stick of butter and I'm gonna butter it up because the butter will really brown the outside of that skin. Okay, here are our rosemary sprigs. Oh, and there, we're up to temp. I'm gonna pull these off. I might use them, so I'm not throwing them away. I'm just gonna set them to the side. Okay, now all I did was shave some pats of butter off a cold stick of butter. Make sure it's cold so you can get nice good little chips like that and we're just going to place it on top of the turkey i keep calling it a turkey because i am a turkey um no i'm just making a joke but yeah sorry i keep calling it a turkey. since i got a little accidentally too heavy-handed with the garlic i am going to experiment a little this is honey i'm going to drizzle honey all over the chicken and I actually have some dried minced onions. I'm gonna splash on, cause I know they're gonna stick to that honey. And I'm gonna see if it'll crust up a little. There it is. And we're gonna give it about 15 minutes and then check on it. And when I say check on it, we're checking on color. We want it to look pretty. We want it to look like a roast chicken. Okay, the chicken is out. You can see the internal temp is 170. It's not as brown as I wanted. Um, and I did start getting some burn in here. But everything's cooked and we're gonna let that set, which basically just means like cool down, chill out for a minute, and then we're gonna start eating. Oh no, oh no, Laura's home, Laura's home. Quick, attack. I uh, wonder if it's Laura or Laura and Kelsey. We're about to find out. Hi. Hi. I made roast chicken. Uh, you should be able to smell it. I'm about to go check it. I smelled it as soon as I stepped in the door. How was the watermark? Um, it was kind of boring. Oh, how was CT? Entertaining. It's always entertaining. I met this guy who was probably like 80 years old and he had explained how he Laura, that's because you and I live in Bono Beach and we're like middle-aged and we're like some of the youngest people up here. Laura just got home. I just pulled this out, stuck it in, seeing what kind of temp it's coming up to. 150, why is it stalling out? It was at 160 earlier. Ooh, look at the steamy land. Okay, the internal temp is where we want it, but I still want this nice and brown. So while I'm bringing the oven up to temp, because I've turned it up to like 500, like I don't care, I just, I want this brown and crusty. I am going to take the rosemary. And I'm going to strip it and put it on there, and then I'll show you what it looks like. I'm married to Laura, and Laura, we've known each other, what, well, been together, what, 15 years? Yeah. So, 15 years, and I just asked her, I said, um, how much rosemary do you want on it? When I was going to strip those rosemary sprigs, and she goes, you know, I don't really like rosemary. I guess I've been living in a cave. To make a long story short, I put rosemary on this half of the chicken and none on that half. 
Because what is it, baby? Marriage is about... Compromise? That's right. And that's why we're getting the big trophy mount gator. No. And we're going to put it right behind the TV in that big blank space. Like right here. Yeah, oh not. my goodness. Mm -hmm. Laura is fairly opposed to dead stuff. I've never... Ugh, every time I kill a gator, I get it belly skinned because I want the hide to sell. Now, this year, I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna get a trophy mount, which is where they split it along the belly and then they flay it out with the open mouth, almost like a bear skin rug. And I want to hang it right all the way down. It's not a super ginormous gator, but it is just about 10 foot. And that would cover that area perfect. That is an emphatic hell no. And you want to what, put fake paintings of like lotuses up? Um, weren't you supposed to like put those plants on that wall? No, because the brackets we got were too small. So I thought it was a mutual decision. It was like, yeah, Wally, you know, you bust ass. You've been a great husband. Go get that trophy gator mount. Go get it. You do it, baby. And don't you fucking dare hang it in this house. <laughs> ah, I love you. I love you. Okay. The chicken is out. You can see the internal temp is 170. It's not as brown as I want it. Um, and I did start getting some burn in here, but everything's cooked and we're going to let that set, which basically just means like cool down, chill out for a minute, and then we're going to start eating. Okay. I am really trying to wrap this video up. The chicken, I keep calling it turkey, is about to come out and Laura was watching the video earlier with Gabe and she thought we met through the... CNW29453, which is the crime neighborhood watch for basically Hellhole Swamp because yeah. it's the most sparsely populated population density, the most sparsely populated zip code in South Carolina. And I was like, no, we met him at, there's a super secret little spring fed. Like super secret little spring fed pond in an area that I'm not gonna tell you about. But it was me, my husband, my godson, my godson's parents, and we had found out about this place and we were going out there to scout some fishing. And he was there loading, what was it, a kayak or a canoe or something? Kayak. It was a kayak. Um, into the pond and I'm like thinking to myself like, no he wasn't he was putting it on top of his car oh well, he doesn't know <coughs> better than me but either which he way he just got right? done fishing oh okay yeah. okay that was right that's right that's right but no I think it's really interesting that um, you know we met in this super secret place and that was like years ago yeah it was that was a yeah. long time ago no really cool and yeah. he's a cool guy like he is, oh, you know, he's the uh, head naturalist at Cypress Gardens now. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, I knew how knowledgeable he is, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to, to these kinds of things, but like, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's the one that does all the lectures and stuff now. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. He's I know. A yeah. yeah, well, he's, he's definitely fit for the job, you yeah. know? Super, super, like, educational. Gabe and I do um, a lot of uh, snake hunting, flipping tin, flipping boards, driving roads. Laura is not a fan. Like, I can be like, hey, Laura, you, you want to go snake hunting tonight? It's raining. She's like, no. Like, well, who's going? Who's going? Because when <laughs> all of us go, it's almost like a social type thing. Right, and I'm into the social aspect of these things, and I think it the you know the education is interesting and whatnot but like when it comes down to like hey let's go flip some tins and find some snakes and stuff yeah that's more up your alley and gabe's alley not up my alley don't forget parker <laughs> yeah so he got busted by his mom for speeding at 
what, almost 100 miles per hour. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> that, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna clue you in on this real quick before I pull this chicken because I think it might be burning. Gabe's father wanted to show Gabe a new truck and Gabe was out snake hunting with Parker and in order to get him home at a very quick speed he sent him a text that said found a rattlesnake in the yard gabe said i'll be right there and his father replied you better get here quick before i kill it <laughs> and so gabe and parker flipped out so they could get there and relocate the snake well parker was still a minor at the time on his parents insurance and they had the like GPS tracker in his mind. Oh, it, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> but just to give you all an idea of how conservation minded these folks are, which we all are. Like we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't run with poachers. We don't, we don't screw around. We enjoy our privileges. We utilize our privileges and we don't want to take them away. And we most certainly don't want our natural resources taken away. Coming from a man who's eating store-bought chicken tonight, but we might have a, oh yeah. Fuss call, or send me a text. Really? Yeah, when he's hog hunting tomorrow. Oh. Asked me if I wanted one, and I said, hell yeah. Um, he said Give something. Give us those cuts. Yeah, well he said something about cooler. And I sent him a text. I was like, are you going to peel it and quarter it? Question mark. He was like, maybe. I was like, oh! You know so, what I like. Yeah, well, we'll be eating. If he, you might have, we were going to have to drive to pick it up. Um, mm. What's it actually sweetie? close? What do you mean we? You, you got a business there. I love you. I love you. Laura ended up picking up food while she was out. So, what I did was, I carved off some skin, some meat, some onion, some carrot, and some potato. I wrapped the chicken back up, and I'm gonna leave it in the warm oven. And then we're gonna do the taste test, which is how we always finish up these videos. As far as the cooking. Should we start with the best or the worst part? What do you mean, best or worst? I mean, you're the taste well, tester. Well, skin. Well, we That's know skin is part. your favorite. But this you isn't real tater? crispy. I left the foil on too long. All right. So, okay, okay those are the taters. Mm -hmm. And we got to carve this and bring some to Mac tomorrow. Ooh, yeah. I can taste the rosemary and I like it, which is. I was gonna say, I rosemary. took those from the rosemary side, you rosemary hater. Mm -hmm. Look, there's rosemary right there. I was gonna say, I don't even like rosemary, but that was really good. It makes it taste fancy. I prefer earthy, but that's really You good like too. my ginger carrots. I love your ginger carrots. Now, that's a, that's a Vidalia sweet. One of them nice Georgia sweet onions. I'm not gonna lie, I always love sweet onions. Yeah. And those are no exception. No, those those came out really good. Yeah. Now that the the meat is here, taste it. You know what it tastes like? Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Here, give me that fork. You're about to taste some skin, but I want to taste. Alright, it's a fork, you can cut up the skin. Mm. Wow! Very savory, but it's subtle. I would agree with that statement. Alright, now I'm gonna save half for you. I'm gonna eat this half because it looks tastier. I'm sorry. I'm being oh, it's okay, greedy. <laughs> really good, just like the rest of it, but it ain't pretty crispy. much my favorite. No, 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 it's it's like really good. Okay, here, let me give it a shot. I'll give it the camera. Yeah, here, you try that. I know you and I are both skin people. 
I know. We should and probably buy more legs and thighs. Well, like, I like I like skin, crunchy skin. Like when we're eating grocery store meat, we should get more legs and thighs, I think. What do you think? Wow. It's got the fat, you know, flavor. Mm -hmm. um, it's got the skin flavor. That rosemary is kicking. It is. Everything else is kicking. Um, too soft and gelatinous. You think? Yeah, I didn't. I'm, I like my skin crispy, crispy, you know yeah. that. And I tried that and I failed. And that's cooking. I mean, we're both happy. We have food for us, the neighbor. Um, we're going to have sandwiches. We're going to have soup. We're going to have a lot of food that's going to come from one chicken and a bunch of really cheap root vegetables, a bag of potatoes, a bag of carrots, a bag of onions. And we used almost none of that. You know, salt, pepper, all this stuff's cheap. You can get this at dollar stores. You can get it at gas stations. You can get anywhere. Um, like I said earlier about the plastic bag, it is store-bought meat. But it's still meat. It's still, you can cook for yourself. Anything beats window food. Yeah, I uh, honestly... <laughs> I, I love Taco Bell. I do. I do. I tried to kill our own chickens, but they're too personable. It almost made me a vegetarian again. So. Laura looked at me one day and she said, you know what? I think I want to kill one of the chickens. And I sort of called her bluff. I'm like, okay, you want to kill the chicken? I didn't say I wanted to kill a chicken. I said, uh, I said I wanted to eat a chicken. Well, she did say she wanted to eat a chicken, but she said, I want to kill a chicken and then eat it just to see if I can do it. I said, okay. And I sort of called her bluff. I was like, well, um, what chicken do you not like? Cause I figured she'd be like, oh geez, I like all the chickens. And I don't kill pets. I hunt, I eat meat, I eat animals. Not, I don't raise them and kill them. I'm, I can't do that, just me. Call me a weenie, call me a wimp, whatever. Didn't you have a cow at some point? That's different. <laughs> Cows are different, okay? Don't ask me why. But I asked Laura, I was like, okay, check it. You wanna kill and eat a chicken? I was like, pick a chicken. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, you're gonna have to kill one. Like, pick one. Like, what chicken do you not like? And I thought she'd be like, yeah, I don't, I don't wanna kill a chicken. She thought about it and she looks at me and she goes, you know what? I don't like those two Rhode Island red hens. <laughs> they're loud. They wake me up in the morning and they're annoying. She goes, I can kill those chickens. And I was like, whoa, I married, <laughs> I married Savage. Like, whoa. Okay, y'all, um, we're done. That's it. Don't know how to do an outro. I got the trash out. We cooked. We, psh, whatever, white woman. I cooked some food. I cooked some food and- um, It's really, really good and you did a great job and I'm super, super happy. But you know it. what? Laura went to Watermark to have some drinks with the girlfriend <laughs> and you know what she brought home? Cheese steaks, <laughs> double meat. That's right, double meat in the Bono Beach coming from Watermark cause, well, I don't know. It's, not only the best cheesesteak in Bonnie Props Beach. to Ashley, who sent me a Facebook message while I was at CT's and reminded me that I had placed an order for food and forgot to pick it up. Oh, for I did. you, yeah. I'm like, Ashley, well, She's like, no. yo, I can't leave work till you come back here and like get this food. I was like, oh my God, I'm on my way right now. Mind you, they're two doors down, but whatever. I, I made it happen. She didn't stay later than eight minutes longer than she had to and I made sure she bottom was line we live in a small <laughs> ass town everyone fucking knows everyone and everyone's business and it's not a bad thing because not there not are some thing. fucking crazy folks up here but everyone knows who the fuck they are and I'm pretty sure I'm in a clip I think Laura's safe but I'm I think I'm like 
No, you're definitely on the list. Remember that one time? I end up on the neighborhood forum a lot. All right. Love y'all. I'm going to dip. <laughs> uh, Laura and I are going to eat cheesesteaks. Not the roast chicken that she thought out last night and was like, oh, I want to eat roast chicken tomorrow. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll do it for you. Then she's like, I'm going to go drink with Kelsey. I'm going to come home with cheesesteaks. Oh, don't look. Mind. I don't mind. No, I love Watermark's food. Um, <laughs> goodbye, YouTube. We'll see you soon. Have a good one. Um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully we'll get a better video out to you tomorrow.